Okay, so what you're looking at is the underside of a SBE Console 5, AM sideband 40 channel radio. Um, they're very nice radios when they work, <laughs> which this one is not. A uh, customer sent this one to me, just got it. Um, it's got problems, and it's, it's going <laughs> to unfortunately need a lot of work. I mean, uh, needs a cap job, no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Um, it's had some really sloppy modifications, and yeah, it looks like somebody's been trying on the other side to uh, fix some bad solder joints. Um, now, one of the first things you'll probably notice, most base station radios, parts face upward. Well, you can see the parts are on the bottom side, <laughs> so they're, it, it's almost kind of mounted like a, a mobile radio. In mobile radios, your parts hang down. Well, this, this radio chassis is the same way. Um, now, the problem with these is they're a very early double-sided circuit board, but they do not use through-plated holes. So every single pass-through from one's, from the other side, the actual, the main solder side of the board down here to this side has a little small, I don't want to call it a wire because it's actually square, it's more like a terminal you know, piece of copper, you know, tin-plated copper, but it's a pass-through. It's a solid piece of, you know, tin-plated copper metal goes through the hole, and then it's soldered on both sides to the trace on this side and the trace on the other side. Looking over this thing, uh, I don't have enough fingers and toes on my body <laughs> to count all of the bad uh, pass-through solder connections I see on this thing. Um, and this isn't the first time I've seen this on, and not just this radio, Pretty much any of these early double-sided circuit boards, um, especially th these radios that have the uh, PLL can like this, uh, you'll find these actually in not just SBEs, you'll find this similar circuit. Now this one's probably the most complicated one ever made um, as far as this style radio goes, and that's because if you're not familiar with it, the console 5 has a scan function. so. Normally, this is just the PLL module, and when you pull this up, there's absolutely nothing on the board down here. As you can see, this side is also populated with a bunch of ICs, and some of them rather large. That's because, like I say, this has a scan feature. Um, but uh, the main problem, like I was saying, is uh, bad solder connections. And like I say, unfortunately, they're not easy to fix. I have trick as... How can I describe this? I almost need to show you when I solder it. But when you solder one of these boards, because... Let's see. Here, here's a perfect example. We'll just take this. This is actually the shield for over here. Got a hole in it. So let's call this the circuit board. It's got a terminal, basically, that passes through it. Okay, it's soldered on this side, and it's soldered on this side. Now on a, a modern board... They're what they call through-plated holes, or it has a funnel inside of it. Uh, a lot of actual early double-sided circuit boards, they'd actually have a, an actual, basically it was a piece of tubing that went in between the top and the bottom, and then it was staked. It's just like when you do uh, repairs on uh, double-sided, or actually it doesn't matter how many layers, but when you're doing multiple layer circuit boards, when you do repairs on those, if you're re repairing a through, uh, they actually make a little funnelettes. Uh, you can get them from uh, Pace, uh, APE, a couple companies that make uh, circuit board repair kits. But it's basically a little funnel you stick in and then there's a swaging tool and then that flares it out basically to crimp it you know, in, into the board and then you solder it in. Uh, the problem with these boards is they don't have anything like that. It's literally a trace on the top, trace on the bottom. Nothing in between. That's part of the problem. That, that in and of in of itself creates bad can create bad solder joints. If you ever look at these boards, you'll always notice it's not a frequently or occasionally. I don't care <laughs> what radio it is. If it's double-sided circuit board without through-plated holes, if you look at all the solder connections, you will see air bubbles in a large majority of them on the other side of the board. Um, and what causes that is you have to remember this circuit board. There is a little bit of air gets trapped in there in, in the actual board material. Well, when you heat, when you solder it, you're soldering the a copper trace on this side, 
copper trace on the other side, and this pin, it heats up the board around it. Well, now that air, that gas, has to escape. So where does it escape through? Through the solder. And you'll notice when you bring your soldering iron in, when you're soldering something like that, when you pull your soldering iron away, you'll see it bubbling. You'll see, bloop, 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 looks like a little volcano. You're pu and you'll, and you know, it'll usually, just as one of those bubbles pops, that's when it'll cool. But you'll, you'll see, and there's really nothing you can do about that. It's just the nature of the beast. Uh, now, like I say, unfortunately, that leads, that leads to weak solder connections. Now, the other side of the board, which has the majority of the solder on it, usually you don't have a problem with this side of the board, just because there's more solder on it. Usually, if you have problems, the problems are going to be on this side. That's because there's a very small amount of solder on this side. So, and I don't even know how, I, actually, I've got this out, I actually wanted to make, I didn't, wasn't sure if this was bodged in there, because, man, I just, <laughs> yeah, this is the wrong coils that go in here. I'd actually unsoldered these, and, uh, was just measuring them with an inductance meter, and that's when I, I was looking at the uh, solder traces on this thing, and, yeah, I got the, oh, uh, yeah, it's one of those. So, let's see how close we can get here. A little bit of extra light. Let's see if I can get the light at the right angle here. But if you look down here, so you can see there's little traces. There's not as much as on the other side of the board, but there's plenty on this side. This is one that's really, really bad. How close I can get the camera before it starts to lose focus. I'm trying to get the light right at the right angle. really hard to see in the camera. In person it's really easy to see. <laughs> but if you look right about there you can see it. there's a little halo the whole way around that pin. And there's another one back behind this resistor. It's the same way. And you can see they're everywhere. <laughs> they are all. I mean they're, they just completely cover this side of the board. There's little pass-throughs all over the place. And I'm going to say 80% of them <laughs> On this board, this is actually probably the worst one I've ever seen. I mean, I'll usually see a couple of them. You know, when you're doing a recap, you're changing all the electrolytic capacitors. You'll frequently see a few of them, and you touch it up, and it's fine. But, man, this one, this thing must have really gone through a lot of uh, heat cycles. Because uh, that's what causes that. As it heats and contracts, this board material, you know, expands and contracts. Well... You gotta remember it's soldered on either side of the board, so what it does is it pulls, it rips, it rips out, and what it eventually ends up ripping out is off of this side of the board, because like I say, there's usually more solder on the other side of the board, because that's the main solder side. There's very minimal amount usually on this side, just enough, just you know, to, to around the, those pass-throughs. But uh, so if you ever work on this, specifically this chassis or any radio that has these early double-sided circuit boards with non-through-plated holes. And it's very easy to tell because there'll be a big, it'll look like a big blob of solder at each through. And if you, you know, desolder it, you'll see there's actually a little square of, you know, like I say, it's not, it's a piece of wire. It's just instead of being round, it's basically a square. <laughs> but there's a little, you know, a little piece of copper or wire basically through each one of those holes and yeah just look for that like I say usually this the problem is not on the other side it's usually on this side and that's what makes it even worse a lot of those pass-throughs they're hard to get to on this side or they're impossible to get to without removing a part because it's not <laughs> uncommon for them to put these blasted things underneath of a part so you can't even see the stinking thing without having to remove something so yeah it's and honestly, the, the only way to really fix this um, that I've found that seems to work and hold up where you'll never have a problem again is actually remove those. So now what I do is I come in with an actual, you know, an actual desoldering iron vacuum style. That's the wrong tip. I grab, uh, you know, probably, eh, they, they usually fit through that hole in that one. But, uh, you know, I'd pick a tip where I know the, like I said, I think 
think they fit into that one. Um, but what I do is it'll, when I come in with the desoldering tool, I can actually hit it, and when it vacuums it out, it actually, instead of just removing just the solder, it actually pulls that pin, basically the whole thing out. Then what I do is, is I come back in with a piece of just plain bare copper wire. I'll install it, fold it over on you know the one side. Basically, I'll make a little a 90 degree hook on the end, solder it on one side, come to the other side, cut the wire off, you know, just leave about that much, just a little bit on this side, and then same thing, I'll actually fold it over, so it's mechanically, you know, clenched in between the two, you know, sides of the circuit board, and then solder it, but like I say, very time consuming, especially on these boards, because holy shitter, there are a lot of pass-throughs on here, <laughs> so, uh, like I say, did want to make this a long video, just, uh, something to, for you to be aware of if you work on these or any radios like this, early double-sided boards, if you're having intermittent problems, especially if it's one of those radios where you push on the board, you know, from one side or the other. And this is this radio does exactly that. Occasionally when you turn it on, there's no channel display. You push on the board, wiggle it a couple times, boink, the display comes in. Push on it a couple more times, the display goes away. You'll push on the board, you'll have sound. Push on, well, not even sound because it's not, it has no receiver transmit, but you'll get a little bit of just hum noise in the speaker. But you push on the board, it's there, you push on the board, and it's gone. And yeah, it's, <laughs> it's got bad connections all over the place. So just be aware of that. You ever have problems? Um, now, if you're working on your own radio, you're not out anything but time, you know. If you're doing it as a hobby, well, there you go. You come in, like I say, my opinion, the best way to do it is is remove the the throughs, the little copper, you know, whatever you want to call that, wire pin that they have through there. Remove it, use a piece of wire, fold it over, solid copper wire, fold it over, solder it on one side, come to the other side, fold, you know, cut that off, fold that side over, and solder it as well. Um, another thing you can do is use silver solder. Uh, now, silver solder is pretty much the only thing that I use on all of my soldering, um, with the exception of when I'm doing surface mount work. But uh, pretty much anything through hole in hell, even when I'm doing tube type, you know, vacuum tube work, the only thing I use is silver solder. Um, I don't use a lot of people think, oh, silver solder, it conducts better. Well, not really. I mean, there's how much better conduction can you get than soldering anyhow? It doesn't really matter what which metals it is because it's, it's chemically bonded because there's at a molecular level when you solder the molecules, you're actually making a boundary layer of a new metal in between the copper and the solder and whatnot. Um, the reason I like to use silver solder is it has a higher tensile strength. So it prevents stuff like this from happening in the first place, or you know, or repeat, you know, of it happening again. So, uh, like I said, I like to use silver solder for that reason. If basically that's the only reason I use it, it's stronger. Um, I work on a lot of mobile radios, and I work on a lot of old radios like this that have these types of problems where it's solder problems. So, uh, you know, anything I can do to prevent me from having to ever see this radio come back for the same problem. You know, if it's as simple as buying a more, a little bit more, well, not a little, it's, it ain't cheap stuff. Um, but, you know, I spend the money and buy a roll, you know, silver solder and, you know. Where the hell is it at on here? On here, so, oh, there it is. AGO2, 2% silver. Um, but like I say, that's the only thing I use. You know, there's one roll, here's, you know, even... Little, little tiny stuff is another roll. Where in the hell's the composition? Oh, no, that one, yeah. Oh, that one's lead. Oh, that's my lead tin. That's a eutectic. Uh, I've got so many blasted rolls of solder. And yeah, there's another silver solder. Um, and like I say, I use eutectic solders occasionally. Um, you know, those are 6337s. Actually, that's what this one is. And this one, 6337s, I definitely don't suggest using these. These tend to be even softer. I use these because you, you look it up online, or, or hell, even videos specifically on solder. But eutectic solder has basically no plastic state. Um, it's either a solid or a liquid, unlike any other solder that slowly cools down. And that has its advantages in certain soldering applications. But 
like I say, for stuff like this, that's one reason I like silver solder. It's really good for these through-plated holes to prevent pullouts again. But uh, there you go. There's just some tips on, uh, you know, fixing stuff like this properly so you never have to fix it again. Uh, as far as finding them, have fun. <laughs> There's, I mean, now if you go through and test and find a bad joint, that's one thing. But if it's one like this, for they are just everywhere. It's just an extremely time-consuming process of going through. It's not like there's a little flag on there that says, Hello, I'm a pass-through. You've got to go through and find every single one on this board and do that. So yeah, it can take a lot of time. But uh, So contact the customer and uh, we'll see what he wants to do with this.